You thought it couldn't get any crazier than a train flying at a thousand kilometers per hour? Think again. Because today, we're diving deeper, past the headlines, through the vacuum tubes, and into the very core of what it will take to make this record-shattering dream a reality. Oh, and let's clear something up right away. No, you can't get from New York to Los Angeles in 90 minutes at a thousand kilometers per hour. That's basic math. The distance is roughly 4,500 kilometers. So even at full speed, we're talking about a 4.5 hour ride, not a cross country sprint. But here's the real question. If this isn't about speed alone, what is it really about? Is China's maglev revolution a national flex, a science experiment? Or is it the first real glimpse of a planet where physical distance no longer matters? Strap in, because this story is just getting started. To grasp the true magnitude of a train traveling at a thousand kilometers per hour, we need more than imagination. We need context grounded in science. Because this isn't just fast in the way we understand everyday speed. This is a fundamental shift in how we interact with time, space, and physical limitations. Let's break it down. A thousand kilometers per hour, approximately 621 miles per hour, is faster than the cruising speed of most commercial airliners, which typically fly at 850 to 900 kilometers per hour. It's also faster than a bullet from a standard 9mm handgun, which travels at roughly 900 to 950 kilometers per hour. At this velocity, a maglev train could travel from London to Paris in just under 20 minutes, a journey that currently takes more than six hours by car, or over two hours by traditional train. In theory, such a train could circle the entire Earth at the equator, around 40,075 kilometers, in just over 40 hours. That's continuous, ground-based motion at a pace that was once reserved for fighter jets and science fiction spacecraft. But here's where it gets more complex and more dangerous. In physics, kinetic energy, or Ke, is calculated with the equation kinetic energy equals one half times mass times velocity squared. What this means is that doubling the speed of a train quadruples its kinetic energy. So a maglev train traveling at 1,000 kilometers per hour doesn't just move faster than one at 500 kilometers per hour, it carries four times the destructive potential in the event of failure. And then there's air resistance, or drag. At these speeds, air no longer behaves like a gentle breeze. It behaves like a wall. The force of drag increases exponentially with velocity. At 1,000 kilometers per hour, even tiny amounts of air resistance can generate massive amounts of heat, vibration, and structural stress. That's why many proposed ultra-high-speed trains must operate in near-vacuum tunnels, where air pressure is reduced by 90% or more simulating conditions found at altitudes above 50,000 feet. Without this vacuum, the energy required to overcome drag would be so high that the system would become unsustainable, both economically and mechanically. Now imagine maintaining stability, alignment, and safety at those speeds. At 1,000 kilometers per hour, a train covers 278 meters every second, almost three football fields in the blink of an eye. If the track were to deviate by even a few millimeters, the results could be catastrophic. Every component, from the magnetic levitation systems to the guideways, to the superconducting magnets and sensors, must be engineered to microscopic tolerances. You're no longer designing a train, you're creating what some engineers now call a low-orbit spacecraft on rails. The only difference? This one runs on the ground. Every bump jolts or vibration becomes a potential crisis. The system must handle thermal expansion, seismic activity, electromagnetic interference, and even atmospheric conditions without fail. This is why such technologies aren't just technological marvels, they're engineering moonshots, the result of thousands of innovations across material science, fluid dynamics, magnetism, and AI. In short, a thousand kilometers per hour isn't just a speed, it's a barrier, a threshold. It's a whole new category of transportation where physics stops being friendly and starts demanding perfection. Crossing it safely isn't just difficult, it's also challenging. 
and it may be one of the greatest engineering feats of the 21st century. This isn't just a race to build a faster train, it's a high-stakes geopolitical showdown. A 21st century Cold War being fought not with missiles, but with magnets, speed, and strategy. At the center of this race is China, staking a bold technological claim on the future. The nation has already developed a prototype maglev capable of reaching a, a staggering speed of 623 kilometers per hour, or 387 miles per hour, a project backed by over $100 billion in potential long-term infrastructure investments. This isn't just speculative spending, it's a declaration of intent. China envisions a future where Beijing to Shanghai takes under two hours, and where maglev corridors stretch from Southeast Asia to Europe under the Belt and Road Initiative. Meanwhile, Japan, the long-term leader in high-speed rail, is not backing down. Its SC maglev train has already achieved a world record speed of 603 kilometers per hour, or 375 miles per hour, and is moving toward commercial operation on the Chuo Shinkansen Line, which will connect Tokyo and Nagoya by 2027, with extensions to Osaka by the 2030s. What sets Japan apart isn't just speed, but reliability and real-world deployment. Their maglev isn't a lab demo, it's happening. In Europe, the strategy diverges. Rather than chasing top speed, the European Union is investing in network integration, sustainability, and scalability. Countries like Germany and France are expanding and modernizing their conventional high-speed rail networks, which are already among the best in the world. While maglev remains experimental in the region, Europe is positioning itself as the leader in green, connected rail mobility, not just raw performance. And then there's the United States a country that pioneered air travel and the interstate highway system, now noticeably absent from the high-speed rail frontier. While private ventures like Virgin Hyperloop and Elon Musk's Boring Company once made headlines, most have fizzled or stalled. With no national maglev strategy and limited high-speed rail infrastructure, the U.S. remains a spectator in a global technology revolution. But here's the twist. This isn't just about who gets there first. It's about who defines the standards. Think back to VHS versus Betamax, or iOS versus Android. The winner of this race won't just sell more trains. They'll set the global regulatory framework, the manufacturing ecosystem, and the interoperability protocols that everyone else will follow. Whoever builds the dominant system gets to write the rule book for 21st century transportation. So yes, this is more than a train. It's a strategic platform, a diplomatic tool, and potentially a techno-economic weapon in the shaping of the future global order. To understand how this machine moves at jetliner velocities without ever leaving the ground, we need to break down the three revolutionary technologies that make it possible. Number one, levitation, floating on magnetic fields. The foundation of the maglev, short for magnetic levitation system, is its ability to float the train above the track eliminating physical contact. This is achieved using superconducting magnets, often cooled to ultra-low temperatures with liquid helium or nitrogen. These magnets generate powerful, stable magnetic fields that lift the train a few centimeters off the guideway. The result? No wheels, no friction, no mechanical resistance. At these speeds, even the smallest source of drag can be catastrophic. Magnetic levitation solves that, silently and efficiently. Number two, propulsion, riding a railgun. Once airborne, the train is propelled forward by linear synchronous motors embedded in the track itself. Think of it as a railgun you can ride. Instead of rotating like traditional engines, these motors use alternating magnetic fields to pull and push the train forward at incredible acceleration rates. This system allows for precise speed control smoother rides, and far fewer moving parts, translating into reduced wear and lower maintenance costs. Its motion? Engineered through magnetism, not mechanics. Number three, vacuum tunnel, slicing through air resistance. Now comes the game changer, the vacuum tube. At high speeds, air resistance becomes the ultimate enemy, imposing a physical wall that grows exponentially with velocity. 
To overcome this, engineers propose enclosing the maglev system inside partially evacuated tunnels, reducing air pressure to just a fraction of atmospheric levels. This drastically reduces aerodynamic drag, allowing the train to reach speeds comparable to commercial aircraft, but with a fraction of the energy consumption. It's the same principle used in supersonic wind tunnels, except now passengers ride inside. Of course, pushing these boundaries comes with Herculean obstacles. A vacuum tunnel must be airtight across thousands of kilometers, resilient to earthquakes, floods, and extreme weather, and seamlessly integrated with power and safety systems. This isn't traditional civil engineering. It borders on terraforming. Imagine building a sealed, reinforced corridor the size of a subway tunnel that stretches from Beijing to Guangzhou or even from New York to Los Angeles. It's a megastructure on a planetary scale. And yet, that's exactly what some of the world's top engineers and scientists are trying to do. Because to make a train fly at 1,000 kilometers per hour, you don't just redesign transportation. You redefine what's possible. The dream of riding a train at 1,000 kilometers per hour, or 621 miles per hour, might sound like science fiction but it's rapidly approaching science fact. So when will you actually be able to buy a ticket? Let's start with what's already happening on the ground. In 2023, China achieved a major milestone. A prototype maglev train in Shangxi province reached a staggering speed of 623 kilometers per hour, or 387 miles per hour, during testing, breaking previous records and edging closer to that 1,000 kilometers per hour mark. To push the envelope even further, Chinese engineers are now constructing a 60-kilometer full-speed vacuum test track designed specifically to simulate long-distance, real-world conditions. This isn't just a demo. It's a vital stepping stone toward commercial viability. And most critically, China has announced its goal. By 2035, the first commercial ultra-high-speed maglev line could be fully operational. That gives engineers and policymakers about a decade to transform prototypes and test beds into passenger-ready nationwide infrastructure. While 2035 may seem distant, in the world of transportation megaprojects, it's incredibly fast. For comparison, it took the global airline industry over 40 years to evolve from propeller-driven aircraft in the 1920s to widespread adoption of commercial jetliners in the 1960s. In contrast, China's high-speed maglev ambitions are targeting a full leap, from concept to commercial deployment, in less than 20 years. And this isn't happening in isolation. It's backed by a national strategy, massive infrastructure investment, and a growing talent base in superconducting physics, vacuum engineering, and transportation logistics. So, when will you ride this magnetic bullet? If the timelines hold, and the physics plays nice, you could be boarding a 1,000 km per hour train before today's toddlers graduate college. That's not just transportation evolution, that's a transportation revolution at warp speed. Let's step back for a moment. This isn't just about a train. It's about engineering at the edge of science fiction, a system that defies gravity, shatters speed records, and challenges the very laws of physics. If China succeeds, it won't merely be a technological win. It will mark the dawn of a new era in human mobility, one where cities merge into mega-regions and cross-country travel takes minutes, not hours. But here's the big question. Is this the future rushing toward us on a cushion of magnetic force, or is it a high-tech mirage, a dream we're chasing faster than we can ever catch? If massive engineering feats, game-changing innovations, and world-shaping megaprojects are your thing, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss what we've got coming. This is just the beginning. Because the next stop might just be the future.